What is going on, you delusional deli bird? Today we're playing with another deck that did very well in Limitless Qualifier 4. It is this uh, Spiritomb Beast deck that was piloted by Andrew Wambolt to a uh, top 8 finish. Um, and I kind of like it a lot. The only thing, I haven't played with it yet. So the only thing I'm like not sure if I like or not is switches instead of um, the scoop-up nets. Uh, scoop-up nets are really nice because they allow us to reuse the ominous posture of Jinx. And they basically act the same as the Switch in most other ways, and even giving us more options overall throughout throughout games. So, haven't played with his list yet, so I don't know how much I like the Switches versus Scoop Up Nets. The Switches, however, do help us play around Scoop Up Block Mime um, that does exist in quite a few Dragapult decks right now. So it does do that for us. Um, besides that, the rest of the list is very straightforward, very consistent as far as a Spiritomb build goes for Acrobike. Uh, 10 energy cards usually you're sitting around eight or nine in most lists most lists that i've personally played or worked with but he's got that um beast energy in here because we do play or he does play the um buzzmosa which is where it's best or you best utilize is on the buzzmosa we actually ko jirachi with the beast game with the beast energy to draw two prize cards um which actually comes up pretty frequently against decks that play metal saucer that can actually use slap to ko our spirit tomb so we can actually respond with a beast game on the jirachi to close out games and get two prize cards um, that does play one basic dark, just having more outs to energy to attack with our spirit tombs. Our main attacker is just pretty nice to have. Um, and then, yeah, spirit tombs the main attacker. We got the beast and Hilago, the buzzwool, the buzzmosa. We have another attacker in the Tapu Fini, which is basically just there for the baby Blacephalon matchup. And then it is Marnie and Professor's Research for our draw supporters. That's basically all there is to say about the list. Uh, before we get into some games, I did want to say that I do stream pretty much daily over on twitch.tv, so be sure to go check out the Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash. Azul GG, streaming pretty much daily over there. Be sure to come by, catch one of the streams. Let's go ahead, let's get into some games. All right, we're into our first game here. We do win the coin flip. I'll be opting to go first. Um, I'm actually kind of back and forth on whether I like going first or second with the Spirit Tomb deck. We're gonna go first this time, uh, see how it goes. Yeah, I'm back and forth on whether I like first or second. Be able to use that draw support on our first turn to find Spirit Tomb is super nice, but building extra spike should we just open a Spirit Tomb and get access to a quick ball is also super good here. We do get the quick ball, so we will be able to build that spite. So we got that going for us. Almost had nothing to work with there, but now we got the we can build that spite. Go ahead, quick ball away. Probably the boss's orders to be honest here. Yes, get rid of the boss. Get that spirit tomb. All the spirit tombs are in the deck. We prize a couple energy, one energy actually, just the Aurora. Um, no supporters prized. Switch prized. All right, grab this tomb. We'll throw the tomb down. Attach a whoop, attach a rainbow. Uh, I'm gonna keep the hustle belt. Um, uh, Pico Army decks usually don't play ways here. Let's go ahead and attach the hustle belt, fetch a jinx, and pass over to our opponent. See what they got. Yep, that's all for us. Opponent is playing Bolton, probably a Pico Ram deck, but it could also be a not Pico Ram deck. It could be something else. We'll have to wait and see. Possible is just like straight Bolton or something like that. Either way, it's gonna probably be a favorable matchup because it is um, some deck with Bolton. Bolton decks, whatever. Whenever there's Bolton in a deck, it's usually pretty good for us. So, looking like it's already going to be a favorable matchup just based on the Bolton. Could be Green Speaker on, could be you know, Bolton and Ganadel, whatever it might be. There's Bolton involved. It's probably going to be pretty good for us. Looks like it is a pretty standard P looking Pika deck here. Here comes an Electromagnetic Radar. There was a Speed Energy. So, it's definitely not uh, Pika Ram Greens or Bolton Pika Ram Greens. Definitely Ability Pika Ram, Standard Pika Ram, or more standard, I guess. Um, yeah, we can actually get a one shot on this Bolton on the next turn. We can actually, if we get two more Spirit Tombs in play, we can uh, double ominous posture from those Spirit Tombs to this Spirit Tomb, and then building spite with this Spirit Tomb. We'll actually do 220 damage. Oh, there's a Marnie. That's why I was thinking of benching this Jinx here, but also didn't want to clog my bench depending on what else happened and what else did happen. And we are no longer probably be getting this knockout. Well, it's possible there goes double double or AE power and E power from our opponent. So they can actually knock out our Jirachi here immediately if they want to. Um, they could still pull off a full blitz actually as well. They got one basically in the discard pile. They can get another one in the discard pile and an energy switch and the Coco Prism. They can actually tag our full blitz here turn one, which would definitely be pretty scary for us. I definitely do not want my opponent to full blitz turn one. So we're hoping they don't do not get that. We'll have to see what they get though. Yeah, definitely hoping they don't get that. But they definitely could pull that off. Here comes a quick ball. Getting rid of a lightning. That could be. There's the Coco Prism. All right. If they have an E-Switch, they've got it. That's pretty crazy. Um, they've dead a change. They've supported. No more of those shenanigans happening this turn. But 
they could still have that e-switch in hand nope just the bolt storm but they're set up super well here so far let's see if we can't get that pressure back on our opponent uh, we got a rainbow so this actually also adds to us being able to get this knockout here i'm gonna go ahead and do it i'm gonna put the rainbow here try and pull off this um this knockout here we could even feel something to the active literally hitting anything else besides bolton would be pretty good oof all right this is nothing there's nothing in this hand for us to do um can build in spite uh we're hitting for 100 now so we actually knock out the dedene um or we could knock out the zerora we build spite but we could save a damage in play which actually sounds a little bit better overall we are going to build in spite no matter what we're doing 160 right now um i could feel him and just see what our opponent sends up and that could save the great catcher um so let's do that let's go yeah whirlpool suction see what they send up and then we have the great catcher if we want to bring something else that they send up we might just always also try and keep the great catcher here um they send up the pikaram all right they're giving us the dedene that's great we get to save a damage in play now we get ominous posture from the spirit tomb back onto the jinx uh, we have quite a few switch cards left so i think i'm gonna go with a stellar wish here try and get a quick ball or a um a shrine would also be nice i'm gonna get this acro bike here i want to dig i don't want to draw support here i want more than that and the dene is okay the um a skateboard is also okay losing to dene does not feel great we might want that extra digging power on the next turn um but next turn we are set up for the sledgehammer oh i'm kind of torn on this one i don't want to put the dene in play this turn because our opponent could just um knock it out and skip sledgehammer turn we're just gonna go with the escape board here we'll go ahead and hope that's enough for us here retreat back to the spirit tomb uh ominous posture uh to the jinx i think it's safer on the jinx here doing 160 all right anguish cry knock out that to Denny. get ourselves two prize cards to work with and like i said we do have what's it called active on the next turn we have that sledgehammer active on the next turn we still want to get some spirit tombs in play because right now we're heavily lacking in the spirit tomb department but um yeah sledgehammer active next turn sounds good to me easily should easily be able to get a knockout here with the sledgehammer as long as it's in the deck i guess i didn't check um but i'm pretty sure i saw him i didn't hard check i haven't checked all my pokemon or anything but i'm pretty sure he is in there we'll be in trouble if sledgehammer is not uh not in there right now because then we have no spear tombs building up having built up spite up to this point so we have no backup attackers right now besides the sledgehammer sledgehammer is our go-to guy right now for sure um no doubt about that um we could actually even try and look to get this knockout on the peak around with the great catcher uh get the excuse me get the buzzwool set up and we could actually look to try and knock out the speaker on next turn um one of the things that i had really liked in spirit tomb up to this point that um Wambolt's not playing in this list is actually the blacephalon gx because it can be really good to um just kind of win the game in like awkward prize scenarios like this one where we can go like knock out that dedene for two prizes and we can potentially knock out this peak around next turn for three prize cards we can just burst gx to close out games um so that's definitely something um miss i feel like is missing from his list maybe he didn't try it out at all uh the buzzmosa is super nice but i also think the bur the burst gx from the cephalon gx is also super good as well definitely something i would consider trying to fit into this build for sure there's a reset stamp that's fine with me our hand was not particularly great uh oh it has gone from not particularly great to still not great and they got rid of our skateboard we do have a shrine now and we're not we're not behind in the prize trade at all at this point either uh, i'm gonna go ahead and stellar wish there's a quick ball there's a boss's orders um gonna take the uh we don't have a switch card we need a, a supporter here i'm gonna go with that acrobike we basically need a supporter at this point i think all right acrobike that's not a supporter that's an ordinary rod this is where the dedene would be super nice but he's in the discard pile so we could have quick balled for him i'm gonna have the ordinary rod i guess and uh replace the stadium which is good uh but definitely not gonna be enough i don't think and now we are in big trouble this is where we get into big trouble um let's see put ordinary rod back in a superior tomb and a dene increase our chances of top picking the dene on the next turn we could go with the boss's orders here um up there to dene maybe it gets stuck maybe it messes up their plan or something they want to pull off and I guess we just have to pass, pass that. All right, we got into a real rough spot after a pretty good start, a pretty good first knockout. Looking for that sledgehammer turn. Our opponents reset him to four, completely ruining us. Um, yeah, we only had five cards in hand before, and it wasn't that good. So still might have been in the same spot, even if they hadn't reset stamped us. They just attached to the Dene. There's the tag switch up. 
All right, the Bolton will be able to attack. I was like, whoa, they might not be able to attack this turn. Looks like they'll be able to attack just fine. Um, we can still win at this point, actually. Um, we could even get one more prize card and still potentially win the game. Um, probably need to try and top deck something here. It's a great catcher. I guess we have to bench the Buzzmosa and pass once again. Wow, this one really fell apart really quickly, unfortunately. Um, was looking really good at it for a time. And yeah, fell apart super fast. Once again, still actually have the potential to win this one. We're about to go on to the Nihilago turn, where we can use Nihilago to copy probably the Tag Bolt and knock out the Bolton, and then hope if we found some Spirit Tombs as well to start building Spite, could then knock out a Dedenne or one of these other Pokemon to win the game. They are gusting up our Buzzmosa and hitting it for 190. We do need to move this thing this turn. There's a Jinx, that's not gonna cut it. All right, we're taking an unfortunate L here in this first game. Hopefully our luck turns around uh, in the next. All right, we're into another one. We are going second this time. We'll see how that works out, like I said, uh, at the beginning, I'm not quite sure how I feel about first versus second with this deck. Um, both feel pretty good because if you go first, going first is just always great, right? You get to build some spite if you get some spirit tombs, but going second, um, it almost feels like it's the same. Um, but you get those extra spirit tombs in play, and you have a, you're playing a deck that has such a favorable prize trade against most decks that it. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and bench this because we do have an extra card here, so they might. Oh, we're playing a mirror match. Um, so it does feel good to like actually go second. It feels like sometimes so we're playing in a mirror match. Um, this the, the mirror match is very draw the first prize card and uh, kind of roll over your opponent. So going second is definitely where we want to be in this one. Going second is definitely the advantage in the mirror match. Definitely glad we're in the second. Uh, going second here in this one. Ooh, they actually bench the Nihilago, which is actually. Um, well, it's not going to be a mistake anymore. Um, could have been a mistake from our opponent. They're actually pushing it up because it allows us to actually use Tapu Fini as an attacker, which we can still do here. Um, and actually, I'm going to dig for a quick ball here. We can actually make a really cool play. Oof. We got a quick ball. We can bring up one of these guys, bench Tapu Fini. I uh, can still get a quick ball off this and then switch into the Tapu Fini. Got another Acrobike. Going to keep going. Oh, I guess I could have actually switched into Jirachi Stella, which and then switched out. Hey, got the quick ball anyways. So I want to make a super cool play here. Um... Gonna play a research, just get rid of a research. Um, grab the Feeny. So while a 100 Beast is in play, we hit for 100 damage for one energy. Um, this guy's got 110 HP, but we can Fion, move that to the bench um, so we can get a knockout on it. Super cool play. I should have taken the second Jirachi because I had double switch in hand. If I only had one switch in hand, I should have gone with the Acrobike, but I did have double switch, so I should have gotten second Jirachi over second Acrobike there. Definitely a mistake on, uh, on my end. Never punished, I guess, is the uh, way to think about it here. Putting double Jirachi in play, though, with this deck, it doesn't feel great when you don't know if one's going to get knocked out, though, because we don't play the scoop-up nets like I was uh, like I was talking about in the intro. Um, scoop-up nets gives us a lot of control over our bench and stuff, whereas um, switches don't really give us that same control. Uh, one thing we want to look up for as well is our opponent probably plays Mew as I draw my Mew here. Um, we don't want to play into our opponent's uh, Psy Power, so we don't want to stack up too much damage on our Spirit Tombs to kind of give them another attacker they can potentially work with. So we only want ever two damage counters on each of our Spirit Tombs, and then we just kind of stop building Spite uh, from there. And then vice versa, if they overstack a Spirit Tomb, we can respond with Mew uh, knocking it out. Another Spirit Tomb, that's great. Um, the Nihilago could get us with those Void Tentacles here. I guess that would be a little bit annoying, but we could just Hard Retreat to uh, a Spirit Tomb probably and get a knockout. Hard Retreat to a Spirit Tomb, use the boss's orders to get a knockout. They actually sent up the Jinx here over the uh, Nihilago, which is interesting. Interesting that they chose to do that. So our opponent plays Great Ball, which are pretty good in here. I've been messing around with a lot of different Pokemon search cards. Great Balls, tried Pokenab for a little bit. Um, it does feel nice to have more ways to find Spirit Tombs. Pokenav especially feels nice sometimes when it gets that special energy for us. So a lot of different ways to play them out. Um, but this one's looking really good for us. They got the Beast in play. It's their first Spirit Tomb in play now with damage, or their only Spirit Tomb in play with damage. Comes an Ominous Posture. Looks like they're already going to move it around, save it on the Nihilago. Um, I'm probably going to go ahead. Oh, picking up the... Sending up this, I'm I'm confused as to where as to where this is going. Extra damage here, they can move it up if they want to. Currently, what are they missing here? Now they've put a Dedenne in play for us as well. This is looking awful for my opponent. Not gonna lie, they have a Dedenne in play. Even if they get this knockout here on my top of Vini, which is possible, uh, they can move this damage from Nihilago to the active, um, and then. Uh, building spite and then attach a hustle belt, but there's a concede. I'm not surprised there. They were super far behind It looks like they were whiffing that knockout as well. We were just too far ahead mirror matches super 
uh, always balancing on a knife's edge. One thing goes right for one person, and it can just be over that quickly. All right, into another one. We went first, second, first, or now we won the coin flip here in this one. I'm gonna try and go first again. Let's try it out. Let's try going first again. Um, this hand looking a little bit better than the one we had before for going first. A lot of options in this one. A bunch of Pokemon, which you'd love to see because it really opens up your quick balls later on in the game. Looks like we're up against a Baby Blounds deck. A, the top of the is already in the hand, ready to go. Um, and this deck does play for Marnie, which you do want to utilize to try and pressure our opponent to have to put those two prizers in play to try and keep up in the game. We want to put them. That, we want to have to put that Oracorio in play. We want to have to put that. Um, what's the other guy's name? Oracorio in. Well, let me think about the Cell Witch for a second. We already have a Marnie. Probably gonna draw a Switch card. Let's go with the Acrobite. Try and find another Spirit Tomb. Buzzwool is definitely the way to go. I think he's a pretty good attacker in this matchup. Spite. It's possible to get a turn one knockout here, but if they don't, I do not want another Spirit Tomb in play. I'm just going to bench the Feeny. Um, not going to attach yet either, because if they don't put a Blount in play, then I want the energy on the Spirit Tomb. If they do put a Blount in play, I want to go with the Feeny. I'm just going to sit with the hand like this. Yeah, I could bench the second Jirachi and be like, okay, if they knock on my active one, then I have another one to work with. But if they don't, like I said, this list doesn't play scoop up net. We don't have as much control over our... What we, once we put something in play, it's in play. I'm down to put the Buzzwool in play because he's always going to come up and be a factor in this matchup. If they ignore the Buzzwool, then I get to keep whatever attack I originally had, you know, active and doing stuff. So that's fine. Um, yeah, Buzzwool's going to get triggered no matter what. I want the Buzzwool in play. I'd play it before I play the Marnie next turn anyways. So if they play a Reset Stamp or a Marnie, whatever it might be, let's go ahead and just get this Buzzwool out of here right now. Get him cooking. Get him moving. Um, and then, yeah. want to be hitting with our, our opponent with the Marnies over and over again. Try and f they're going to need a lot of stuff every turn to attack with a Baby Blown, um, unless they can Blazer knock out a Spirit Tomb, which we don't want to put five damage counters on a Spirit Tomb, because we don't want to get a free Blazer one energy swing with that. Um, one thing that they might play that we can't really control and we won't be able to see until they do it is the Mew with Psy Power, so that could possibly pick up a Spirit Tomb knockout, but yeah, we want to keep Marty and our opponent, hopefully force out the Dedenne or the Oracorio into play, um, so that way even if they get this first knockout here with this first Baby Blown and get ahead in the prize trade, oh, looks like they've already committed a uh, two prize Pokemon here, the Cramorant, and they're loading him up. They're probably going to go after my Spirit Tomb here, which is un which is unfortunate for us. Don't really want to lose our Spirit Tomb to a Cramorant here, but it is a two prizer in play. We have this Fion, so we can constantly push this Cramorant to the bench until we can actually get a way to one shot it. Um, and they won't be able to attack, attack back to back with it. They'll need a Welder, or they can't. They might not be able to. They'll need a Welder every time. So, um, still missing a Switch card and energy, but I think they use Flint, so they have the energy. It's just. Uh, do they have the switch card, which they probably do. Baby Blondes plays a ton of switch cards. Some play the scoop of nets, some don't. Um, if they don't play the scoop of net build, it's possible they might whiff here. Nope, there's a switch. The question right now is just what are they going to go after? I assume the Spirit Tomb. I guess they could go after the Feeny as well. Um, no, nah, it is the Spirit Tomb. Makes sense. That's what I thought they would go for as well. All right. Going to bench the Fion. Attached to the Feeny. That's going to become our attacker this turn. We're trying to go for a one shot. Had a hustle belt. No Spirit Tomb to go with it, though. Mr. Jinx, so we could move this damage off the Feeny this turn to a Spirit Tomb, if we can find one. Looks like the answer to that is we're not going to find one. Actually, could still get a Quick Ball here. Hold up. Hey, there we go. And I will still be aggressive about setting up Spirit Tombs. If they want to use Cramorant again, snipe again like that, it's kind of fine with me. Um, I could also grab the... Oh, Mew's prize. I was going to say, I could maybe grab the Mew here, but not around. I actually probably should have used Whirlpool Suction before I played the Quick Ball there to shuffle my deck. That way it's possible I top deck the Fion or can research into it. Um, opens up that line of play a little bit better because I do want to keep pushing these guys to the bench up until the point where Spiritum can one-shot that Cramorant. Building Spite. And now I'm actually not going to Jinx the... I'm going to move this damage from the Jinx onto... or from the Feeny onto the Jinx. I'm going to save it on the Jinx here um, for later. I don't want it on the Spiritum because if it's all on the Spiritum when they go Cramorant to snipe my Spirit Tomb next turn, which I feel like they probably will. Um, if they do that, Cramorant to snipe my Spirit Tomb, um, I would lose two damage counters. And now I only lose one, which means now I can move this damage off of Jinx later and put on a new Spirit Tomb. Um, so we're looking like we're going to try and get the Fion again, or the Feeny again. We'll see what they do again. Um, or not the Feeny again, the Fion. If they attack with Cramorant again, but they might attack with the... We'll see where they put this energy. This is a big deal here. They did put another Baby Blind in play, which makes no sense... If they're going to attack with the Cramorant. Um, looks like they're going to attack with the Cramorant. Yeah, unfortunately, our Mew is prized. We would love to be forcing them to knock out our active and let us build up this damage, build up the spite on the Spirit Tomb. Uh, they do need a Welder every single turn, but I guess they probably needed that anyways because we were going to be knocking out the Blount. So I guess it's not that big of a deal that they need a Welder every single turn. Um, 
There's the Orochorio. That's what we really wanted to see. We want to see this Orochorio come into play. Want to take advantage of that later. We only have one Great Catcher left, but we do have two bosses orders as well. So we're looking to KO this Orochorio for two prizes to get our final two prize cards um, to close out the game. So um, we're super happy to see the Orochorio come into play here. It's super nice. Big fans of that guy uh, making his way into play. There's a Flint. I guess at this point, I'm actually regretting benching the bus wall a little bit because it's not going to do a whole lot. Um, if they're going to continuously attack with Cramorant, the Buzzwool does not get a whole ton done, actually. Um, there's a Mewtwo setting up another Welder. They are playing the Scoop Up Net build, even though we have yet to see one. That pretty much tells us that. Yep, there's a Scoop Up Net, probably on the Jirachi. Yep, get it to the bench. We know they top deck a Welder. We know they're going to attack with Cramorant once again. We might just go ahead and hit this Cramorant this turn. Yeah, once again, Mew being prized really does stink here. Nothing we can do about it. Just going to have to roll with it. Um, we could also set up for that beast gameplay to close out the game on a Jirachi, actually, as well, if we wanted to. Here comes the Spit Shot. Once again, focusing my Spirit Tomb. Goodbye, Spirit Tomb. All right. Let's see what our top deck is. Might just hit this for 100. There's a Shrine. Build up damage on the Aura Choreo. Could be relevant. Um, could just Aurora Energy it away, though, which is what I think I'm going to do here. Could grab this Fion once again, I think. Damn. This does not feel ridiculously good. I'm trying to figure out the, the best line of play to go down. I guess it's going to eventually be... We need, we need to make sure we two-shot the Cramorant or one-shot something. And then clean up this Oracorio at the end of the day. Go with the Fion here. Force up a one-prizer. We'll probably force up a one-prizer. We'll see. Fion. See what they send up. Okay. So we're gonna have to go with that sledgehammer to take that knockup, but that's fine. And also, I guess we'd rather have the Feeny around than the sledgehammer, the Buzzwool. Anyway, so actually, if we get Spirit Tombs, kind of works both ways here. Because now, oh, another Spirit Tomb is sick. Um, switch into the Jirachi, get a Stellar Wish to work with. There's that Great Catcher. I'm go ahead and grab it. We could open up the Great Catcher on the Oracorio play as soon as next turn. Building Spite on both of them. Still have the Shinx with the damage to work with. And then we're going to go ahead and Sledgehammer with this Buzzwool. Like I've been saying, this Oracorio is one of our main targets to try and uh, get ahead in this game at some point. There's a Hustle Belt. Got the Great Catcher. Got two Spirit Tombs. They can't take away all of our options this turn with the Cramorant. So we're going to be able to KO that Oracorio next turn if we want. And then we're just two prize cards away to win the game from there. We could two-shot the Cramorant. Or we could, um, you know, one shot to one prizers back to back or something like that. We'll have a lot of options here. We're still going to be ahead in the prize exchange. No two prizers in play for us. Can still put our Dedenne in play and utilize it if we have to um, in the late game to kind of dig for that last uh, last prize card or two. Um, so that's no problem as long as we use the game, use it to win the game. We don't want to put it in play without winning the game with it on that turn. Once again, our opponent going into the Cramorant. Um, I could have committed to two shot in this earlier on. I was kind of afraid if it made its way to the bench after I hit it, it might get, it might just stay there. We can't great catcher for it, so we need the whole boss's orders combo on that turn. So, feeling like this was probably the better route to go. And so far, it's felt fine. So we'll just see how the rest of it goes. Um, definitely getting rid of this Oracorio next turn. We have an escape board to put on active, so we can move the Buzzwool next turn. Um, still plenty of switches left, but can guaranteed move it with this escape board here. Then we have the hustle belt and the great catcher. Just kind of short an energy to attack with with the Spirit Tomb, but we have plenty of those left, so I'm not too worried about hitting an energy. But I guess it is the only concern I have right now, is we could whiff an energy. Um, we have we have quite a few left, though. Like I said in the, in the intro, going over the list, Wambolt played a lot of energy in this build, 10 energy total. I guess the Beast Energy we can't use on a Spirit Tomb, but even just that basic Psychic can make the difference in finding the energy to uh, get knockouts. Um, so the question here is just what are they going to spit shot? It'll probably be another Spirit Tomb. That's the way they've been going up to this point. I don't imagine they will change. Um, it doesn't look like there's any reason for them to have to change up to this point. Once again, if we had them Mew, if we had Mew protecting our bench, this game would have been super easy. Would have already pretty much been over by now. Would have been put them in a super awkward spot where they wouldn't have been able to utilize the Cramorant continuously. We would have been able to like trap it on the bench, eventually one shot it with a Hustle Belted Spirit Tomb. But the fact that we don't have this Mew has given our opponent a lot of room to play with in this game that they usually wouldn't have uh, in this matchup. Um, still feeling good, though. Still have the prize trade in our advantage. Just need to find the cards at this point. Um, so it's Heat Factory. They've used an Acrobike. Here comes the Beast Springer. 
that's not going to make a difference. They're just getting out of their deck. They just need a switch card, and then I'm curious to see what they KO. I'm I'm assuming they're going to KO a Spirit Tomb, but I guess they could go with something weird um, <laughs> or interesting here. Here we go. There's the Cramorant. Here comes that Spit Shot. Sniping. What are they going to get? I don't know. They don't know. I mean, it should be the Spirit Tomb. I can't imagine they go for anything besides the Spirit Tomb. I guess they're not done with their turn yet. Energy Retrieval. Maybe they haven't used Heat Factory yet? I think they did. I don't know why they would use Energy Retrieval. I guess they want basic energy in their deck and just in case I Marnie them or something. Um, it's interesting that they actually gave up the Mewtwo when they did. They're going after my Jirachi. That makes zero sense to me. Not going to lie. I don't understand that at all. Um, I guess it is slightly annoying, but uh, not really. All right. These are coming down. Um, great catcher up the Oracorio. Skateboard to the active. And Marnie. Now I get to build up another Spirit Tomb. I'm fine with this. There's the energy I was looking for. This feels great. Yeah, I'm not sure what my opponent was thinking with, uh, with that one. Definitely an interesting choice. Um, if I do say so myself. Uh, Rainbow here. Boom. It's active. I guess we don't need a Hustle Belt on this one, but we have one on it anyways. Um, I'm going to go ahead and Anguish Cry. Otherwise, they could like, target down whichever one has the Hustle Belt. And we wouldn't have Hustle Belts on them. I guess I should have actually used Ominous Posture to move that energy over there. Because um, it did mean... If I had Ominous Posture, the energy for, or the damage from this guy to this guy, if I get... Another Spirit Tomb by going Ordinary Rod plus Quick Ball. And I can build up another damage on this guy in this turn. Um, now I need a Rainbow to get the damage on this guy. Uh, to get that extra damage in on this guy. To get him up to that point where he can one-shot the Cramorant. And that's only assuming our opponent actually pulls off the Welder play. They only have two Welder left. Don't have the Mewtwo to work with anymore. Um, so they might not be able to actually pull off that play this turn. Actually, I want to check their discard pile. Still have their Ordinary Rod. It's a big deal. Their Burst GX is gone. This guy's gone. This guy's gone. This guy's gone. Still have the Ordinary Rod, because they can recover any two of these guys if they want to. I'm sure they're going to plan to use the Cramorant once again. Would be very surprised if they didn't Cramorant this turn. If they do even attack, um, I guess they maybe have to Blazer if they don't have a Welder. They'd have to go for a Blazer hit if there is even an Energy Prized to hope to get a knockout this turn. They definitely need to get a knockout this turn. If they don't get a knockout this turn, uh, I mean, the game pretty much ends at that point, I would assume. I can't imagine they have a chance. So they're going with the Baby Blown this turn, which is very interesting to me because uh, I guess they're afraid of losing the game because of Cramorant, but this allows my Feeny to attack with. Well, this allows us to attack with the Feeny for the turn instead, which is huge. I'd much rather attack with Feeny. I already have this knockout ready, set up ready to go then uh, attack with the uh, Spirit Tomb. I guess they're going to try and go to the Cramorant on the last turn, it looks like, then. Interesting. We'll see how this goes for our opponent. They only have one Welder left, and they will have to find it if they want to attack with the Cramorant. They can also look to go into the Burst GX. Um, <laughs> there's another uh, Aura Choreo. All right, well, if we get a boss's orders, which we do have two of left, we can actually end the game this turn by knocking out that Aura Choreo. So that's definitely our, our game plan right now. Knock out Aura Choreo with the boss's orders. Let's see if we can get it. There's a switch into the Blacephalon, and here comes a Dance of Tribute. All right, they've got themselves, they'll probably have, if, if, if it's in the deck, if the Welder is not one of their last two prize cards, they'll probably have the uh, the game, uh, the Welder next turn to utilize, use Cramorant, and then Burst GX for the game. Or they could Burst GX, and then I guess use Mind Blown, but they probably want to deal with one of our attackers. Uh, they probably will want to deal with one of our attackers. They did get the uh, Blacephalon GX as back as well. So they're probably going to go in with Spit Shot next turn into Burst GX on the following turn. Um, and we'll see. Yeah, unless it's, unless their last battle is one of those two prize cards, um, they'll be able to pull that off. No problem. All right, Fireball Circus. There it is. Knockout. We're going to send up the Feeny, I think. I can't think of a better thing to send up than the Feeny. The so Feeny's going up. Drew into a Quick Ball. Could just try and make that win happen this turn. Let's see. I think we have a shrine left as well. We have two prize cards left. Let me go ahead and quick ball away um, the Jirachi real fast. We do have the Nihilago. We do have the shrine. Um, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take Nihilago. Uh, bench the Nihilago. Building Spite before I forget. Put the Beast Energy on Nihilago. Switch into Nihilago. Hustle Belt, Nihilago. And play Marnie. 
If we do get the shrine, we can actually use Nihilago to copy Cramorant to snipe the Oracorio. We did not get that. White, we did get a Fion. Which I think I might also use because I actually don't want to knock out the Blacephalon. I want the Blacephalon to be in play. Um yeah, I want Blacephalon to be in play because I want to be able to have Feeny online available as an attacker. So we're gonna go with the Whirlpool suction here. Um, they basically have to send up Jirachi, I think. I don't think they can send up anything besides Jirachi. They could send up Cramorant, um, I guess. Uh, Cramorant would be fine. And then we would snipe their Jirachi off the bench. Or we could just Cramorant the, Jira the Cramorant, or Neolago the Cramorant. Um, yeah, we want to leave Blacephalon in play because it makes Tapu Fini an attacker. Because otherwise what would happen if we attacked with Tapu Fini, they could knock out our Spear Tomb if we knocked out their guy. Um, we're gonna go ahead and Tool Scrapper this. Um, already built Spite. Going to bench the Jirachi. I'm not sure if I want to bench Jirachi. We're pretty aggressive about sniping my Jirachi. I think we're just going to go with uh, Nightcap to copy Spit Shot to Spit Shot the Jirachi. I think that's what I want to do here. I'm actually, we could Spit Shot their Cramorant, um, but that doesn't guarantee. We could Spit Shot the Oracorio, and then if we get Shrine, we would win. Oh man, so many choices here. This one is tough. I think we're gonna spit shot the active. Um, no, because then we have to draw two prize. We have to spit shot the Jirachi, I feel like. Hmm. Oof, I'm torn on this one. Nightcap. Uh, it's gotta be spit shot, but where do we go with it? Spit shot. Can't KO the Black because we want access to that guy. We want access to the Feeny. We have the Spear Tomb available as well. They have to KO our Spear Tomb or that KOs anything in their active. So we know they have to KO Spear Tomb. Um, they whiff the KO, then we win the game. The KO Spear Tomb, we would need a boss's orders. Um, this guy's going to get stuck. I think I'm going to switch out the Oracorio here. Yeah, I think I'm going to switch out Oracorio here for 160, meaning if we get a Shrine, we do win the game through the Shrine of Punishment, knocking out the Oracorio. I think that's the best way to go. I'm not 100% sure. We're going to see how these last couple turns play out. We got two research left. We got a quick ball. We got a Dedenne. Um, that's basically what we need to dig through the rest of our deck. We have two acro bike or one acro bike. We have two acro bike left as well. Yeah, I think we're just going to dig for the shrine. If I had knocked out the Jirachi, they could have gone Cramorant knockout. Spear Tomb, then I would have needed a boss's orders to knock out this. And we're assuming they Cramorant our Spear Tomb, which means this guy's stuck in the active, actually. Um, so I think the best way to go about this is just to punch the Oracorio and then dig for the shrine on the following turn. But that's an attach retreat on the Cramorant. That means they're knocking out our active this turn. Um, then they'll be able to follow up with the Virtue X, but this means that we'll actually be able to retreat our Feeny into our Jirachi and Stellar Wish. I guess it doesn't really make that big of a difference. Um, this doesn't mean they can use Baby Blount to knock out our Nihilago, I guess. So if I had sniped the Cramorant, they do the same thing, they retreat, they attack with Baby Blount instead. Um, yeah, they retreat to the Baby Blount, attack with Baby Blount instead, um, which is what they're gonna do here. And now I could Feeny this. Man, oh, we could also have, um, that's tough. Now, if I had hit the Cramorant, but then I can't hit the Cramorant again. If I just knocked out the Blown with the Feeny, they would have gone Cramorant, slant my Spear Tomb. That's, yeah, this is why this, this all gets solved if we just have a Psy Power Mew on our bench. Literally, this everything just gets solved instantly. Unfortunately, we don't. <laughs> Unfortunately, we don't have the Psy Power Mew to uh, either just snipe this or protect our bench from Cramorant, constantly sniping our Spear Tombs. I could have also just like two shot the Cramorant, committed to that earlier on. Maybe I should have done that. Um, commit to two-shotting that, especially once the Oracorio came down, because then I know I can two-shot the Cramorant and then one-shot the Oracorio later to make up for the uh, prize difference there. Uh, I don't know. We're here now, and we need a Shrine of Punishment to win the game. Still fine. Still have plenty of outs to it. We have the Shrine, two Research, two Acrobike, Quick Ball, a Dead A Change. Got a Stella Wish in the top deck to work with to get there. Um, yeah, let's see if we can't uh, can't pull it off. Um, I'm trying to think, I don't think there's anything else that we can use this. Oh, we have this guy actually as well. So we could jet punch actually to win the game as well. We could jet punch, knock out the Oracorio. I just realized we have that guy as well. So we would need Ordinary Rod into Quick Ball for the Buzzwell Faramosa. That could also work. All right. Another out all of a sudden appeared. Love to see it. Um, here comes that Fireball Circus. They do need three energy. So they retreated the Cramorant. Um... They have, yeah, two Fire Crystals left. This should be no problem for our opponent. They maybe just use an Energy Retrieval, actually. Yeah. So this is no problem for our opponent. I expected to get knocked out one way or another. I'm so much happier it's the Nihilago, actually. And uh, we get to use this Feeny to hard retreat into our Jirachi. 
Draw an acrobike, start with that. Boss's orders also does it actually. I didn't even realize Boss's orders did it uh, until right now, but that does it. Switch into Spirit Tomb, attach the rainbow, and let's go ahead, knock out that Oracorio once more. Yeah, Boss's orders was also an out actually. Could have hard retreat to Jirachi, got the Boss's orders. We had the rainbow. We had a ton of outs actually. We had an insane amount of outs. And uh, yeah, there's that dub. There's that me. <laughs> Hope you guys enjoyed these games. If you did, give the video a like. If you enjoyed the content, be sure to subscribe. Have a good day. Thanks for watching. And peace.